As a motorcycle instructor, naturally I tend to talk to lots of brand new riders and to people who are only about to start riding. And sometimes they ask me questions like Hey, I really like bikes and I want to ride one, but I'm not sure if I really should. And then they say something along the lines of I'm not sure I can handle a bike because I'm 65 years old, or I have bad knees or bad back, or I'm a small 5 feet tall girl and I doubt that I physically can handle motorcycle. Something of that nature. After teaching hundreds of people how to ride, I can definitely tell you that there are in fact some people who indeed do not belong on a motorcycle. So for all you guys who are bike curious and thinking about whether you should really start riding, watch this video and I'll tell you all about it. Before we begin, make sure you've subscribed to this channel and turned on all notifications. Also, I have courses for both beginners and for advanced riders. And remember to register for my newest and most advanced King of the Road course, which will completely transform the way you ride your motorcycle. It is a 9-week long course, in which you will go through more than 40 exercises, each one tailored for developing a specific riding skill. All those skills you will learn in this course are crucial to anyone who wants to become a safe and confident motorcycle rider. With the King of the Road course, you will turn from beginner into an excellent rider in a mere couple of months, without exposing yourself for the risks of learning to ride the hard way. There are a limited number of spots in the course, so go on and register now, before it's too late. Alright, let's start with older riders, because that's probably the most common question. Let's say I am an older guy. Maybe I rode a bike sometime 40 years ago, or maybe I just took interest in motorcycles recently, because why not? Can I start riding, or is it too late for me to learn? Well. I'm glad you asked an expert. Since back in Moscow I have been specializing in teaching how to ride heavy big motorcycles like Harley Davidson's and big BMW GS series, well, let's just say people who can afford those are usually not 20 years old. From my experience I can tell you right away that there are absolutely zero reasons to not ride a bike just because your age is above a certain number. You may need a bit more time to learn, maybe take an extra lesson or two, but as long as you are determined to learn, physically nothing will stop you. Just as a demonstration, here is a 76-year-old dude going through a Gymkhana course. I very much doubt someone can say that he shouldn't ride. That's the footage from the Kimono Racing channel, by the way, which is a great channel for Moto Gymkhana enthusiasts. Give it a look. Probably the only specific thing for older beginner or returning riders is to follow good practices a bit more strictly. Wear full protective gear to not break anything. For your first motorcycle, use something lighter, so you make your learning process easier. And go through a couple of really good courses, preferably private ones, not group ones. If you do that, you are going to have no problem at all. Ok, but what if I have some kind of injury? Maybe I have bad knees or shot back or some kind of another injury. Should I ride in this case? Well, that's really tough to say without specifics. Good news is that riding itself is not really a physically demanding task. As long as we know what we are doing, our bike pretty much rides itself. All we have to do is to guide it. That's what controls are for. So, even if a rider has some health problems, unless it's something really obviously interfering, like blindness or complete paralysis or anything of that nature, usually there are ways to work around the injury. Again, here is another example courtesy of kimono racing. This is a dude with a prosthetic right arm. And here's how he rides. As you can see, there is a way to get around even a really severe injury like a missing limb. I personally never worked with such extreme cases, but I had plenty of students with knee problems, back pains, bad hips, neck issues, stuff like that. And there are always things which we can do to at least partially mitigate this stuff. The way we sit on the bike, how we mount and dismount, 
how we set up controls, all this can drastically improve the experience for an injured rider. Again, all he needs is determination and good guidance. And what if I am a short rider and I can't flat foot a motorcycle? Or maybe I am a small woman and I don't have a lot of muscle power. Should I give up riding? Not at all. As we saw time and time on this channel, motorcycles do not actually need a lot of force from us. Bikes are designed in such a way, so they pretty much ride themselves. As long as we know how to ride properly, we don't need to exert much force. As an example, just look at Dani Pedrosa, who is one of the best riders in the whole world, being half the size of a normal human being and weighing 50 kilos, 10 of which are probably metal plates in his body. Or take a look at those ladies doing a police riding course. Look at how easily they handle their bikes. This once again proves that if we know how to operate the bike, we don't really need much muscle power to do it. Again, from my personal experience, I can tell that any challenges smaller new riders face when they are learning how to ride can be easily eliminated with proper training. A good course suddenly reveals that you in fact don't have to flat foot your bike to feel confident, don't need to have super strong legs to remain upright and don't have to wrestle your bike to turn it. So, if you are a girl or a small dude and you wonder if you can handle a motorcycle, you absolutely can. The only thing which I personally advise you against is modifying your bike suspension to lower it. Tempering with suspension is usually a very bad idea, because it can lead to bad handling, speed wobbles and you will be able to lean your bike less. Leave your suspension alone and modify your seat instead. Normally you can shave a couple of centimeters from it without any harm. Or better yet, go through proper training. I promise, by the end of it, you'll be amazed how little actually you need to be able to flat foot your bike. You know, so far we figured out that with enough persistence and determination there are actually very few things which can stop us from learning how to ride a motorcycle. However, there is one major flow which turns people into horrible riders. And this flow is very common, unfortunately. If we look at most common types of motorcycle accidents, we will find several common factors, such as an alcohol and substance influence, Lack of protective gear, speeding, reckless riding, lack of training, riding without license, etc. All those are definitely signs of bad rider who has no business around motorcycles. And basically all those vices stem from one single cause. The lack of respect for the bike. Ah, you know, it's just a bike. I just had a couple of beers. Whatever. Yes, I'm going 40 above the speed limit, but come on, I'm just having fun. It's logic like that which makes for most of the accidents which involve bikes. In reality, despite the fact that we use our bikes as mere means of transportation or just for fun, motorcycling should not be taken lightly. In that regard, it is not far off any other potentially dangerous activities, like, let's say, scuba diving, rock climbing, or operating heavy machinery. Nobody in their right mind says, you know, it's just Caterpillar D6 bulldozer and I just had a couple of beers. What can possibly go wrong? Well, I'm sure it happens, but I mean, it's not common. Bikes and cars, on the other hand, became pretty mundane things and our brain just doesn't perceive them as dangerous. And that's a huge problem, really. People are driving and texting, speeding, using public roads as racetracks and doing all sorts of stupid things precisely because they don't take cars and bikes seriously. Once a rider loses respect for his bike, he becomes a time bomb and someday he either will hurt himself or someone else on the road. Yes, riding a bike is fun, but it doesn't mean it shouldn't be taken seriously. Ok, it's time to wrap up and before I go, I have to say something. We are looking for a nuclear vessels in Alameda. The nuclear vessels. Just because you asked, guys, I had to deliver. <laughs> Until next time. Bye.